Welcome to the Everyday is Saturday podcast. The number one motivation show on the planet. No more Mondays for you. It's time to make every day Saturday. Boom. This is the podcast where we help you to accept who you are, not where you are. On the roller coaster of life, you know we only sit in the front seat champion. So make sure you are fastened in tight. Let's go. Tired of feeling run down all the time during the week? We can help you make every day feel like it's a Saturday. Let's go pack your bags. It's time to leave Averageville. Introducing the man who thinks abnormal stands for above normal. When you're on fire, people will travel from miles around to watch you burn, baby. We are fired up. The host of the Every Day is Saturday show, Sam Crowley. Hello, champion, and welcome back to the Every Day is Saturday podcast. Let's dive right into today's show. Um, you know what's wild? Side note, before we dive into today's show, uh, I got a uh, comment on one of my YouTube podcasts. By the way, I, I upload now. I'm starting to upload all of these audio episodes to my YouTube channel because YouTube lost, launched a podcasting platform back in April of 2023. So not only do I do longer form video interviews with movers and shakers, uh, and also every day, Joe and Jane's out there that are just living the everyday Saturday lifestyle. But now I'm uploading all of my audios. Well, as I go now, I can't do all whatever. I got 5,000 out there. But uh, the reason I'm doing it is because YouTube Music has 80 million paid subscribers, which shocked me pretty good to learn that information. And also 2 billion uh, people using the platform. So that's where the podcasts go now, <laughs> the YouTube Music. So if you have YouTube Music on your iPhone or Android, or if you want to check out uh, the video podcast interviews I do, just go to everydayasaturday.com on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash everydayasaturday. Check out the channel. But I got a compliment that said, uh, brand new person. I mean, these are all <clears throat> 97% are people who have no idea who I am. And you can tell that uh, when you go into your dashboard. But this person's like, I like it. Very simple. I'm like, yes, you get it. You get it. Simple. Do simple better. I love it. That's the greatest compliment. I love that compliment. It's just so simple. Uh, all right. So, hey, I want to dive into today's show. Being over 50 years old. So if you're over 50, this one's for you. If you're not over 50, let your boy give you a little bit of wisdom. If you're in your 20s or 30s or even in your 40s. God, I thought turning 40 was old. I really did. I think that's one thing to talk about as well. Every time you hit a milestone, 30, 40, 50, you think, holy cow, I'm getting old. Well, I thought 40 was old. Now I look back, that was 15 years ago. I got my first big speaking gig that year. I went to Hawaii to speak. Um, the podcast was still in its infancy. This was 2008 when I turned 40. A week later, I was in Honolulu speaking at a huge event for the very first time in my life. And wow, I thought, I'm 40. I'm old. Oh my God, I can't run as fast as I could have jumped. Now that I'm 55, I'm thinking 40 wasn't old at all. So that's probably one lesson right there. Don't let numbers get in the way of your overall vision or your mindset or how you should think about yourself. You really got to hang around individuals that have a mindset of, yeah, I might be 50, 60, 70 years old, but my my mindset is I'm still 25. Like, I love that personality. That's the personality that I vibe with. I don't vibe with, oh, the aches and pains. and the, I love it for a joke. We all joke about that. You know, even the guys on the golf course I'll talk about, oh, boy, these 55-year-old bones don't move as fast. But it's not a belaboring, depressing, you know, I don't know if it feels good as I used to. Well, you can change that in a minute. I've had so many clients in the health and fitness space, or not even in the health and fitness space, they just decide to make a change one day with their health. And I, can, I can't I can emphasize this enough, how important your health is over the age of 50. I mean, you got to drag yourself to the gym. And I, I drag myself. I'm not somebody skipping out to the car. I'm skipping 15 minutes into the workout, but I am not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you that every time I get in the car. Some mornings I just feel amazing. But here's the part about getting older. You know, you have to force yourself to discipline to get into the habits and create the environment. All right. The environment for me is at the gym. The environment for me is around very positive people, especially as I get older. I have no time. And I mean no time for the negative know-it-alls that are going nowhere. My God, I, if, the, if there's one thing I don't have a lot of now that I used to, it's time. So as you get older, 
you really got to create an environment and you can definitely, I mean, I, I, I absolutely believe you can discover the fountain of youth, not, you know, reverse aging or anything. That's not my specialty. You know, I'm talking about the mindset you hang around vibrant, positive, empowered people every single day and you're intentional and you completely disconnect from people that don't have that vibe, your life's going to get better over the age of 50. I promise you that much. I mean, that's a good principle for any age, but especially as you get older, because as you do age, inevitably, you're going to run into people, especially your age, who just don't have your energy. They don't have your outlook. For example, I have no interest in retirement. Zero interest. I'm not planning for retirement. I don't have any, uh, you know, interest in going into a, an, an, an aging home or anything like that. I want to be buried in the backyard of my acre of land here in Cincinnati. Uh, that's where I, that's, this is my dream. Like I'm living the dream right now. I don't want to wait till I'm 65 or 70 years old. If I want to play around the golf, I play around the golf and I figure it out and I work my schedule around that. I do not work my schedule around work. I used to do that. That's what most people do. Like, well, I can get out on the, I can maybe play nine holes later this afternoon uh, after work or, hey, honey, I'll be home late because I got a meeting. No, 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 no. I used to play that game. It's a, it's a losing proposition. Every part of that game is a loss, okay? De- designing your life around your work is bad. Designing your life around what you really love to do is amazing. I've, I've, I've had both, and I can tell you the latter is the absolute way to go. How do you get there? You got to start somewhere, man. You got to start carving out time, doing things that you really love to do, and then working everything else. That stuff can wait. I mean, there is not an email that cannot sit in your inbox for another 8 to 12 hours or even 8 to 12 days. Most of them can just be unread and never replied to. You know, Tim Ferriss, back in the day when he wrote the 4-Hour work week, said he checked his email once a week. That's it. Once a week. Try that. See if you can do that. See if you can go a week without checking your email. I promise you that the world isn't going to catch on fire and collapse around you by not checking your email, even for a day. So as I get over the age of 50, being super, and I mean super protective of my time, is number one. Being super protective of my mindset is number two. Understanding the environment, all right, is number three. Do I want to create an environment that is going to keep me on this earth for another 30 years, God willing? Or will I go down the road, most people my age do, creating an environment, alcohol, processed foods, Netflix. I watch Netflix every single night. You'll find me on Netflix after 7.30, heck, sometimes even sooner. It's an opportunity for my wife and I to just kind of chill out. She'll be watching her show. I'll be watching my show. We're not tuning each other out. Uh, we'll stop shows to have a conversation. I mean, it probably takes me two hours to watch a 45-minute episode because I'm having a conversation with the person I've been married to for 25 years sitting in the same bed as me. Why would I want to keep my earbuds in and not have a conversation when all the chaos is gone, our nine-year-old has gone to bed? We get an opportunity to talk. That's uh, Our best conversations are at 5.30 in the morning when we get up. We get our daughter up at 6 because she's got to be to school. She leaves at 7.30, so she eats and hangs out and just kind of wakes up in that 90 minutes. But between 5.30 and 6 o'clock, cup of coffee, black coffee for the intermittent fasting. And we talk. We just talk, you know. That's a great relationship builder is just talking to your spouse, to your significant other with absolutely no agenda. I probably do more listening, you know. My wife probably does a little bit more of the talking. Happy to listen sip my coffee, interject when I need to. This is all the stuff that I never did earlier in life. Like I wasn't a very good listener, okay? And I think anybody that was around me knew that I loved to talk. Uh, This podcast is my opportunity to speak or speaking on a stage. But being over the age of 50, you, you have so much more wisdom. And that phrase of, man, I wish I would have known then, what I know now, I would have lived my life differently, both hands in the air. Now, I don't have a lot of regrets, uh, but I do have regret in the sense that you wouldn't know. You just don't know. But I wish I would have done things differently. I would have got in early on this dot com. I would have bought a bunch of domains. I had opportunities to buy domain names for 10 bucks that are worth millions of dollars right now. But I'm like, eh, it's a fad. This whole www dot, 
you know, whatever that is, internet, that's a fad. I'm not going to buy that domain. I'd be a multi-billionaire at this point in time. I wish I would have left the corporate rat race earlier. I wish I would have left probably after 10 years. I think I stayed five years too long. I would have gone into real estate sales. I would have listed houses, been been that guy. I love people. I love having conversations with people. I think I would have been great at it. That was always on my radar to do that just because I love sales. I will always be in sales. I love the art of the sale because it's not about convincing somebody to do something they don't want to do. It's about persuading somebody to step into their greatness and they need that nudge. And that's what sales is. It's effective persuasion to sell people on their dream. They have a dream. Everybody does. It's up to you to sell that to them. Like we talked about last week on the podcast titled Selling the Dream. Go back and listen to that episode if you missed it. So at the age of 50, there's a lot. I mean, look, we could talk two hours about this. I'm just trying to condense it into 10 to 12 minutes or so. But the wisdom that you glean is you got to use that. That wisdom that you have now that you didn't use on your younger version of yourself, it's time to put that into action. It's time to create an environment around you that's positive, that's uplifting, no time for negative people. You can pray for them. We all do. But you can't enable that around you because it's absolutely you're going to end up collateral damage as a result. So the environment that you create ends up creating the habits that you need to be successful. And going back to that first, take care of your health. Just take care of it. Whatever you got to do. What every day. I mean every day of the week. And there's a book I recommended last year on the podcast called, I think it's Younger Every Year. Amazing book. I like it because it's simple. And it talks about doing something every single day. We all, And I'm not even saying 30 minutes. I'm saying an hour. Now, that hour can be walking. You'll get six, 7,000 steps in in an hour. Uh, I'm a big 10,000 step guy in a day. However, I got to get them, I get them. I'm, my wife will catch me walking around the living room, back to the bedroom, to the living room, just to get another 1,000 steps in. What are you doing? Get my steps in. I don't care how you got to do it. But you have to be intentional about that, about your health. Because when you have your health, now it opens up so many more opportunities. And don't buy into that, I'm planning for retirement. How many people do you know if you're over the age of 50 that are dead? Like friends you went to high school with, right? They didn't even make it into their 40s, maybe. Now into your 50s, you're seeing obituaries of people you went to high school with or people in your church and things like that. That should shake you up enough to understand that what what are you planning for? And by the way, what are you going to do at 70 anyway? You can't do at 70 what you can do at 50. The body won't allow you to do that. Like, I love to play golf. I'll play golf into my 70s, but I won't play as effectively as I do right now. And some would argue I don't play as effectively now as I even could anyway, but that's besides the point. Health, number one on that list. So anyway, all of you over 50, I hope it helped. All of you under 50, Take that wisdom, I'm telling you, and use it now. Don't live with regret into your fifth, sixth, and seventh decade on this earth. Too many people do. All right, let's go. I hope this planted a seed in good soil with you today. All right, share it with somebody that needs to hear it. Say it with me, gang. Have the best day ever. And that's a wrap. Another Everyday Saturday podcast in the books. Thanks so much for listening. Would you do your boy a favor? Would you get on iTunes or wherever you listen to the Everyday Saturday podcast and leave a rating for the show? It helps amazing people like you find the show faster. And that's what I'm looking for, amazing people like you. Hey, I'm always hanging out on the interwebs. You can check me out on Instagram, at Everyday is Saturday. Let me know you're listening to the show. Love, 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 love hearing from fans of the Everyday Saturday podcast. And one last thing, when you're ready to launch, get on my calendar, go to launchwithsam.com. You and I are going to work together to set rocket fuel to your dream. Are you ready? Let's do it. I'll see you on the next Everyday is Saturday podcast.